Is Metaphor ReFantasio just a Persona game with a new coat of paint, or does it truly offer a unique RPG experience? Well, to be honest, it's kind of both. Now, it's no surprise that being developed by Atlas, Metaphor ReFantasio heavily leans into its Shin Megami Tensei and Persona roots, from the stylistic turn-based combat and forming bonds to increase the strength of your personas, <clears throat> I mean archetypes, to even including social stats that increase your ability to take on specific missions and create certain bonds. One thing is for sure, Metaphor Re Fantasio can much more fairly be compared to the Persona games than some of Atlas's other series, particularly one that came before Persona anyway. Shin Megami Tensei 5 feels like the edgier, less sociable younger brother of Persona 5. I just couldn't shake the feeling that this was Persona without the heart. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! Sam is from the Beta Network here, and our goal is to save you time and money by answering the question, should you play Metaphor Re Fantasio? Metaphor Re Fantasio is about a fight for the crown in the United Kingdom of Ukronia, after the assassination of its king causes the whole land to fall into dismay. Unlike most other kingdoms, however, the new ruler is to be decided by what the game calls a popularity contest. As the main protagonist, it's up to you to gain as much support from the people as possible to try and win the crown. Not for yourself though, but instead for the prince who has been long thought dead. But it doesn't seem to be that straightforward as you have to face off against the king's assassin Louise, who is power hungry and basically just a strong straight up prick, whilst on the other hand staving off the church's rigged shenanigans through Sanctifex Forden. Honestly, this narrative is strangely as far from a Persona title as it can be, whilst also seeming like it could fit into the Persona universe. I know that sounds confusing, but hear me out. There are definitely certain aspects of the story that seem like vintage Persona, like meeting more in a strange library known as Academia, which all happens in the protagonist's head, much like the various forms of the Velvet Room. My name is Moore, and I am the humble author the novel you've been reading. You stand now in my study. Quite something, isn't it? My name is Igor. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. Also, the overall theme of choice is the discrimination of classes and races, which closely mirrors similar themes in the Persona series, with the protagonists and co being the marginalized people of society. However, much of the narrative flow is still very much its own. Going after the crown in this fantasy-based universe and seeing the twists and turns along the way is thrilling and intriguing, and I honestly found myself seeing something new around each and every corner. The gameplay is definitely going to be the most familiar apart for any longtime Atlas fans. The combat is at its absolute best here with many recognizable tropes. The stylistic UI for choosing attacks and tactics is front and center with the aim being to find and exploit enemy weaknesses. You know the drill. However, unlike some of Atlas's other titles, particular elements of the combat system have taken on a completely new approach. Instead of just a series of turn-based battles, Metaphor Re Fantasio gives you the opportunity to smack enemies in real time. With a succession of blows causing enemies to be stunned, giving you the upper hand when diving into a turn-based tussle. If an enemy is significantly weaker than you, it will be instantly defeated, meaning you can avoid many unnecessary fights. But on the flip side, if you get hit by an enemy, turn-based combat begins and you are at a disadvantage, so it is very much a risk and reward system. But you can always just bypass it for traditional turn-based combat anyway. In turn-based combat itself, the press turn battle system makes a return, with each action consuming a turn icon, whilst critical hits and attacking weaknesses consuming only a half turn, resource management and understanding the enemy is a must. One wrong move can end up wasting a whole round of offense. Honestly, this combat style can be pretty challenging and frustrating at times, especially if initiated by an opponent, but it is super rewarding when you come out on top. So study each foe carefully, as most weaknesses do actually make sense to the opponent you're facing. If the enemy has fire elements, chances are ice will do the trick. If they are wearing armor, probably best not to try and hit them with a blade. I know this is nothing new, but it is nice to see a more common sense approach to enemy weaknesses, as having to play a guessing game was one of my annoyances with the Persona games. Also, if you do find yourself making mistakes in combat, Metaphor Re Fantasio is slightly merciful and allows you to restart an encounter at any time, meaning you get back the HP and MP that was used up in that battle, but also retain the insight that you gained from it. Say what you will about a retry option, but I honestly really liked it because it meant that I could learn how an enemy operated and then put that knowledge to the test at the start of a battle. Archetypes are metaphors version of demons or personas, with each member of your party awakening to their power throughout the course of the story. There are many archetypes to unlock, but not in the way you might expect. Archetypes are unlocked through forming bonds with various characters in the world, because you know, 
This game isn't all about dungeon crawling, meeting new allies or followers as the game calls it, unlocks new archetypes, and strengthening these bonds can add some nice little bonuses to the development of these archetypes. You can change them for each member of your party, giving you more freedom to choose how you approach each dungeon. Just be aware that once you are in battle, you cannot change the ones you've chosen, so a variety in the party is always encouraged. I also really like the fact that you could inherit skills from other archetypes to the main one that you want to use, meaning you could have a bit more flexibility when in combat. There are many areas to explore outside the dungeons as well. This is where you can improve your social stats or royal virtues as it's called here. Some people can only be interacted with once a virtue reaches a certain level. It's the classic, you wanted to say that, but you didn't have enough courage. Hey, Kanji's gone missing. What do you think? You wanted to say that, but you didn't have enough common sense. There are plenty of requests to take on within the various towns as well, from delivering packages to defeating certain monsters that have been causing problems for the town's inhabitants. In this regard, it really is your typical JRPG. Also, I can't get over how awesome it looks as you traverse each area whilst riding a flying sword. It makes the protagonist look bad ass. Key moments in the game are built around the day's till approach. When you are exploring main story dungeons or attempting to take down these bosses, they are often accompanied by a counter that will tell you when it has to be completed by. Failing to complete them by a certain date will mean you will need to restart that section of the game. So planning ahead will help you to tackle these dungeons whilst building up your various stats and bonds. Like many other Atlas JRPGs, my default choice for the voice acting is English, and Metaphor Re Fantasio shows exactly why. Is this true? Captain, I'm one of yours, aren't I? You're not going to trust this little red-eyed bastard over me, are you? The voice cast has done an absolutely stellar job in bringing each of these characters to life. I just love hearing the various English and Scottish voices throughout the game, especially with the mixture of intense and witty dialogue. It gives opportunity for moments to feel heated while still allowing a space for humour and light-hearted banter. Also, I have to mention the music here. As expected from Shoji Maguro and the team at Atlas, the soundtrack is absolutely spectacular. The classical orchestral feel mixed with powerful choir vocals is perfect for this game. I mean, just listen to how intense these battles sound from the music alone. It really made me feel like I was on an epic adventure. Now, I do have one very tiny criticism when it comes to the music, and it can be completely fixed in the menus anyway, but the default mix occasionally drowns out the dialogue. This was most noticeable in conversations with Moore whilst inside academia. I believe you have found a way to wield true magic. You need no petty conduit of mortal men. It doesn't happen often, and like I said, it can be fixed in the settings, but it was just one of those small things that did stick out to me and meant I actually needed to go into the settings to change the volume. Also, I don't think that the sound effects department gets enough credit for these types of games. Like, seriously, hearing each little click as you select the different options in menus and battles, and the sound of each attack as it lands really takes the experience to the next level. Looks like slash attacks won't do much against them. Healer! Flare! The sound effects make everything feel like it has that bit more weight to it, which honestly, you may not really notice until you mute the sound effects to see what a big gap is left. Metaphor Re Fantasio is unsurprisingly stunning to look at. Not only is each character intricately designed and looks great with this cell shaded approach, but the blend of what I can only describe as almost oil painting and pastel approach to the character portraits in the dialogue makes the game look even more suited to the time period. Even the people that just fill out the world are quite a bit more detailed, which was one major criticism that Persona 5 received for its faceless NPCs. So it's nice to see this level of care and attention here. The menus are also oozing with style. It basically screams at you to select different options with how vibrant they are. I mean, how can I not want to select the equipment menu when the protagonist is looking all cool like that? But seriously, I know they are just menus, but given how much time you'll spend in them, it is nice to see so much effort put in to make it feel like part of the game rather than just a pause menu. After investing so much time into Metaphor Re Fantasio and being hooked for pretty much the entire journey, I absolutely recommend picking it up. The story is just so full of twists and turns and interesting themes. There are moments to burst out laughing, grin from ear to ear, 
and even shed a tear or two. The stylized gameplay is so addictive, making you want to complete just one more day or defeat just one more monster until you're in a loop and suddenly 50 hours in. Metaphor Refantasio is an absolute masterpiece and belongs on any JRPG fan's shelf. The game is a love letter to Atlas's various titles, so if you're a long-time fan, you'll enjoy seeing new spins on familiar tropes. However, even if you haven't played a JRPG before, Metaphor Refantasio is a fantastic starting point. Just want to say a massive thank you for checking out this video. As we are a smaller independent review outlet, we depend on your support to do what we do. So if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and let us know what you think about Metaphor Fantasio. Also, because we don't want our review videos sponsored, we rely on affiliate links to support our channel. If you got something out of this review, can I encourage you to head to our description and check out our Amazon affiliate links? We receive a small commission from Amazon for every purchase made through those links, which just helps us keep the lights on and keep the videos coming. So thank you for your support and we'll catch you in the next video.